welcome back. This is part six of the video, hopefully the last segment. I'm probably gonna do one more after this just to uh, make an emphasis on gesture drawing because gesture drawing is really the bread and butter of all the sprite work. It's really the cootie gravel of sprite work. I shouldn't say bread and butter because you're not getting paid for any of this. So at this point, what I wanna do is separate uh, Shinoa's pieces and we're gonna do this because of the way she's gonna be animated. If you're using Photoshop, let me close this. Um, Photoshop actually has an animation tool called Timeline, and that's going to be a window and then Timeline, and there it is. I want to go in here into uh, the only folder I have for this, which is folder 1. I get rid of this reference finally. What's this? This is the other half of the breastplate. All right. And there is one little thing I just want to change real quick. This will take like 10 seconds. Um, I forgot to edit the color of this part of the sleeve to be like this. I want it to be the same because it's going to make the palette uh, more simple to work and easier to work with. So I'm going to separate the leg to about here. Maybe like that, that's good enough. This will be called leg roar, this is going to be called thigh roar. This one I don't even have to worry about because it's hiding. You would normally separate it um, since you would be doing like a walking animation. I'm not going to show you how to do walking animation. Animation. I'm only going to show you how to do the idle animation. If I do a walking animation, that's a whole nother series. And honestly, I could t I could just explain to you how to do it. Go go to, go to uh, Google. Go to Google Images look up walking animation and you'll see all kinds of references to go off of. Okay, and I think all that's left now is the... Where'd you go? Torso. I want to separate this into the mid spine. This is the lower spine. This is where your back is going to arc until it meets your pelvis. say about right here is the upper spine. Maybe a little higher. Okay. So, now this is what you do uh, to make extra sprites. You duplicate the file. Make it number two. You make a new layer in the timeline. So this is new layer, and go back to the first one and um, hide the second layer. So your first sprite is already complete. Look at that. And for the second one, second um, frame, you're gonna hide the first layer and put in the second layer. So now I have one, two, one, two. So all I gotta do now is animate the second layer, and then you're. After you finish animating the second layer, you uh, duplicate that second layer, you make it that the third layer, you um, animate that one further, and there you go, you have three frames. 
most of the time you're going to need a fourth frame, so you just do it one more time. So I'm going to have her breathing out, I'm going to have her um, inhale, and then exhale. And that's essentially all I'm going to do. I'll have her arms raised and everything. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So for breathing in, let's say that this is her just, she finally exhaled, just for our, um, argument's sake. You're going to take all these. And you're going to move it up. Okay. Now you hit play. Let's see how it goes. And it's looking alright. It's looking acceptable. For what it's supposed to do. I want to redo that again because I forgot to uh, get the back arm. And I also forgot to get the background hair. And it doesn't take much, you just need to move it up a little bit. Move it up a little bit more, just so you can see a little better. Okay. Now that I have everything moving up at a default kind of speed, uh, speed all at the same time. I want to move the arms up by themselves, so select every arm piece. Move it up. So that's your second frame. Easy, right? Do it again. And then, so you take the your. Um, your second frame, you're going to duplicate that second frame and you're going to move it over to the end. So she, it'll look like she's coming back down. That doesn't look that correct. So I'm going to move. Uh, I think it's just the, at the location at which I spliced it. And that's a basic idle animation. You can do other things, you can move the arms up more, you can move the elbows up instead of just the biceps and move the uh, forearms up a little bit further than the biceps are going. At this point, when, if you erase anything, make sure that it's consistent with the other groups. This is why you do everything on the first sprite. So we can see that. And we can actually take this and rename it Shinoa Idol. Okay. And now I can take the hair like I wanted to. So go the extra mile. Always go the extra mile with that with that next animation. Make a new layer, or make a new frame. And finish that the way it needs to be finished. Always do the character justice.
All right, that should do it. Okay, yeah. So if you want to make this character any more, um, I guess you could release a sprite. I don't care. I'm not gonna. I don't plan on making her. Eh, maybe I won't. I'd rather you make the make her. Maybe I'll make her one day. I'm not gonna do it anytime soon though. I have other projects I want to get to. And as much as I love Castlevania, I never played this, this Castlevania game. Um, and I've played other great games that I want to get to also. I have a rule that I like to do, which is a, a one character per franchise kind of rule. Um, and that way I can get to every franchise. And then after that, I can start getting to the other characters that I want to do. The last thing you're going to want to do... You would actually do this. I'm going to show you this real quick. A after you make the character, let's say you made all the character, you made every sprite, looks amazing. You, um, way down the road, um, Raven took me um, two and a half months to make, you know, from beginning to end. Alucard took me a year. So when you put, when you make the sprite sheet and everything, this is how you edit the the palette in Photoshop. Just do it this way. Merge it within each of its own frames. So this is how you edit a palette in Photoshop. And there might be an easier way to do this. Um, I didn't look too much in depth, I just kind of figured it out. Anyway, image, mode, indexed. Okay. And then you're going to go to uh, image, mode, and then color table. You can't do this in RGB color. You have to do it in indexed. So actually, I was really good with the, um, with the palettes. With the palette on this one. Usually, it's like there's this many colors. But I didn't have to worry about that this time. But, uh, let's see if I can't find one that's really similar. So, what value is this? Open up Notepad. This is 20, 228, 176, and 155. Alright. What is this? Because this looks really similar. 220, so these two are really close together. I bet you I can eliminate one of these colors and make the uh, palette more simple. Making the palette simple is going to be very useful for things like uh, um, alternate palettes. Maybe you need to change a certain value to certain something else. I don't know if that's something you need to do. Uh, it's, it's mainly for alternate palettes. So then I can go back into RGB color and then look up. This is 228, 176, 155. 255, was it? No. 155. It says 228, 176, 155. Okay. So I'm going to paint that on there and I'm gonna um, you could do a shortcut with this if you want or you could just go to select and then similar Cont control slash forward slash is the shortcut for it by default and this is for the lip okay so then what was that other value In this case, I wouldn't change it, because if I wanted to change the skin color, let's say I wanted to make her black, um, but I wanted to keep the lips the same, or or I wanted to make them um, a separate color besides also black, I would be able to do that if I did not edit this. But if like I have a um, if I have like something right here that's like a like one value off. So if I have this, but it's like this much, 
the uh, color table is going to pick up all that. It's going to add that into the palette. So you're simplifying it by doing all this. 241, 196, 179. 196, 179. And let's see what this one is. Oh, it's just the other part of lit. Yeah, I don't want to edit that, but if I needed to, I could do that. Um, I could l just, I could just uh, take all those colors on the entire sprite sheet, sample this, and then do that. And then when I when I would go back into mode and indexed, um, the color palette would be a lot shorter. Well, it'll be one, it will be one color shorter in this case. So that's how you edit palettes. And the final thing you do with any uh, sprite sheet that I would recommend, uh, you take the background color and you just make it black. And then you import it because that means when you import it into Fighter Factory, you don't have to edit the background color of the sprite sheet. You don't have to tell it what the background color is. It's already there, which is a massive load off your shoulders. I actually did it the, um, the traditional way with Alucard, with Raven. I spent about two weeks. I could not figure it out. I don't. I do not remember how I did it last time. Um, I may have stumbled on it by accident. With Raven, I thought I kept doing it correctly over and over again. I was looking at tutorials everywhere. Could not figure it out. But luckily, I have Photoshop. Um, if you can figure it out, awesome. I'm happy for you. It just wasn't something that I was capable of doing it the second time around for some reason, even though I could do it the first time around. Alright, well, let's look at this one more time. I want to see our, our handiwork. I want to move that upper, the mid spine, still. Well, you get the point. Keep playing with it and you'll figure it out. I think you need to move it more on this on the uh, second one. Alright, if you have any questions, um, post a comment and a link below. You have a good one, guys. Let's save that.